If you had to have a guess at how many people have died going over Niagara Falls, what would you say? We're talking about the period of recent recorded history, say between 1850 and the present day. How many bodies do you think have been recovered from beneath the falls? A hundred? Two hundred? Maybe two hundred and fifty? No. According to the best estimate that we have, there have been somewhere in the region of over 5,000 bodies recovered in that time period. Yeah, you heard that right. Over 5,000 people have died going over Niagara Falls in the last 175 years. Now it seems to me that there are three main reasons why somebody ends up going over the edge at Niagara Falls. First, by accident. Someone climbs over the railings to get a better photograph, slip on the rock, they end up in the water. Or maybe they're in a boat a mile or so upriver, the boat capsizes, the people end up in the water, and they're swept downstream to the falls. Secondly, there are the daredevils. The men and the women who risk their lives to gain a bit of fame, or money, or just to prove to themselves that they could challenge the mighty Niagara Falls and come out the other end unscathed. Some of these make it, but many don't. Thirdly, there are those who come to Niagara with no intention of leaving alive. For them, a trip down the falls is a one-way ticket. And what's even more tragic is they may not always be alone when they do this. And maybe there's also a fourth reason. This one's a little harder to quantify, so for argument's sake let's call it the moth to the flame phenomenon. For some individuals, the falls seem to hold a strange and deadly fascination. They describe feeling an almost hypnotic pull towards the rushing water. Early explorer Lewis Hennepin wrote, The temptation to throw oneself down this incredible precipice is almost too great for resistance. In the 1920s, Dr. A. Benedict described one of his patients who, whilst on a day trip to the falls, watched the circling swirl of the eddies and whirlpools and the mighty downpour of the falls till her weak nerves were wrought with an unconquerable desire to rush along with the waves. Even more recently, whilst filming the Niagara scene for the movie Superman 2, actress Margot Kidder said, I can see why people jump. There's a draw to the water. I feel like it's pulling me. For Bruce Wright, a captain in the Niagara Sheriff's Marine Unit, this strange lure is nothing new. He said, The tourists, they come here for a nice day out to see one of nature's marvels. They look at the water, and the next thing you know, they're wading out, and over they go. So, without further ado, here are three individuals who, in one way or another, intentionally went over the edge at Niagara Falls. This bit of footage was particularly difficult to track down, but some deep digging on the internet led me to an old archived copy. Wikipedia states that Aaron's fatal plunge was accidentally caught on camera by a WGRZ TV crew who were filming a segment next to the American Falls at Niagara. From the footage, it looks as if the crew were filming somewhere around here. When 56-year-old Robert Ahrens, resident of Tonawanda in New York State, suddenly ran into the water and swam straight out towards the falls. The station aired the segment that night on their 6 and their 11 o'clock bulletins, but after that it was, understandably, never shown again. This is Larry Fraser that recorded the man's actions as he was taping a special program with Phil Cabots. It is Phil's voice you will hear on the tape. Factories, hotels, and other buildings lined the river. Then, Frederick Olmsted started a campaign to persuade New York to buy the land. Oh, my God. Holy sh Oh, my God. Oh, my Oh, my The American Falls are the smaller falls at Niagara, but nonetheless dangerous for that. As far as I know, not a single person has ever survived a plunge over the American Falls due to the entire bottom being covered with huge boulders the size of houses. Anyone going over here invariably lands on these and is pulverised. Nobody has so far survived, and Robert Ahrens was no exception. Eyewitnesses reported him waving and smiling to the watching crowds before leaping into the river. No definitive reason for his fatal swim, has ever been given.
Jesse Sharp was an unemployed 28-year-old man from Tennessee. A veteran canoeist, Jesse had 10 years of whitewater experience behind him when he attempted to run the huge Horseshoe Falls in his Red Dancer C1 kayak on June 5, 1990. Friends described Jesse as being meticulous in his approach to this daring escapade. He had made several trips to the falls to plan out the best place for the attempt, and was confident that he could pull it off. So confident, in fact, that he left his parked car four miles downstream in Lewiston. His plan was to successfully ride down the falls, then continue on paddling downriver, pick up his car, and then go out for dinner at a local restaurant where he had already made reservations. His friends were stationed at the side of the falls to capture the event on video, but apparently they were either not able to operate the camera or simply weren't ready when Jesse went over. So there's no footage, just photographs. Jesse wore no helmet so that the camera could get a clear shot of his head and no life jacket in case this impeded him if he needed to exit the kayak in an emergency. As Jesse went over the edge, he raised his paddle above his head in a triumphant gesture before disappearing into the torrent. The kayak was found, intact with just a couple of minor dents, Jesse himself was never found. His body has never been recovered. As insane as Jesse's plunge over the falls seems to have been, it wasn't beyond the realms of possibility that he could have survived. This photograph, taken in 2009, shows 18-year-old Tyler Brad going over the 189-foot Pelusi Falls in a similar kayak. He survived. He suffered only a sprained wrist. In an attempt to raise awareness of the plight of the homeless in California, 39-year-old Robert Overacker made what is probably one of the most well-known attempts to jump off the Horseshoe Falls. His idea was to do it by going over on a jet ski and then parachuting to safety. What little information there is on Overacker describes him as a 39-year-old hailing from Camarillo in California. His job was a salesman of classic British cars, but he also worked as a part-time stunt double and he enjoyed racing cars. Like Jesse Sharp, Overacker had planned his Niagara adventure with meticulous detail and had every intention of surviving the ordeal. Indeed, Overacker had apparently spent the last seven years getting ready for this publicity stunt. On October the 2nd, Robert Overacker, accompanied by his brother and best friend, arrived at Niagara Falls to make the jump. The speedy jet ski, emblazoned with Save the Homeless stickers, was gassed up and ready to go, and Overacker had his rocket-powered parachute attached to his life jacket. It was time. The big day had finally arrived. Overacker performed a few loops in the river just upstream from the falls in order to give his brother and friend time to set up by the edge of the horseshoe precipice and to get the attention of the crowds who were lined up on the viewing platforms on the riverbank. Then comes the moment of truth. He gunned the engine, he headed straight for the precipice and shot straight over the top of the horseshoe falls at full speed. This haunting photograph captured his last moments as he jumped from the jet ski and attempted to deploy his chute. It never opened, and Robert Overacker plunged to his death. Eyewitnesses described the chute as either failing to deploy, or as was also reported, that the rocket chute was not correctly attached to Overacker, and when it activated it just flew off him, leaving him flailing in mid-air without any protection from the fall. A report in the LA Times stated that he was wearing a device strapped to his back, a rocket-propelled parachute, apparently a mechanism to lift him clear of the motorized ski, but officials could offer no details as to how it operated. A German tourist actually captured the moment on camera, and I've placed a link in the description for that video. Following the jump, Overacker was seen flailing around in the water and people thought that he'd survived. However, as he was recovered, it became clear that he had in fact died on impact. It was just the water washing his arms and legs around that made it look like he was alive. A memorial to him 
and his battered jet ski have a permanent place in the Daredevil's exhibition at Niagara Falls. There are, of course, many other stories of men, women and even children who have gone over the edge at Niagara Falls. Some are tales of survival, and many, many more end in tragedy. But one thing's for sure, as long as Niagara Falls continues to attract and thrill thousands of tourists each year, there will always be among them a few who, for whatever reason, will be thinking of a way to get out into that river and take that plunge over the edge. For my Patreons, I'll be adding in a couple of extra tales over the coming week, so if you are a Patreon, make sure to check them out over on the page. Thanks for watching.